This week in the Build a Table Base Workshop, the collaborative Blacktail Build Saga continues as I attempt to redeem myself for the epic failure on my first attempt at this half of the next level table. Then Cam comes in with a surprise twist nobody saw coming. Oh, hang on. You tell them about the uh, $10,000 table you're giving away? No, not yet. I figured I'd do that later. Makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and assume that some of you are tuning in for the first time, so let me lay down just a little bit of groundwork to get you up to speed. Cam over at Blacktail Studio posted on Instagram a while back looking for someone to build him a table base. I jumped at the opportunity, not only because I thought it was going to be a really cool project with another craftsman, but also not having a client waiting on the other end, we can get kind of funky with this and try pushing the limits a little. Now, Cam's kind of what I'd call internet famous for tables that are not only big and beautiful, but he also sells them for a lot of money. Speculative pieces haven't been something I've had a lot of success with. Pretty cool what doors an audience of one and a half million subscribers and four million average build video views get you. So it was really cool of him to offer this opportunity to somebody in the community and I am honored that he chose the design that I pitched him because at the end of this we're gonna sell it on eBay. At least that was the plan. But before we get to the rest of the story, let's go ahead and finish cooking up this tasty walnut pie. All right, what the heck am I doing? Believe it or not, this is actually not an edible, delicious pie made of walnut. This is a table base. Uh, I think I already mentioned that though. The process you see here is actually veneering. So we're building a pedestal base. I say we, Cam's building the top, I got the base. And I've been into a couple of things lately. The first is veneering. The second is bent lamination. Bending wood and sticking wood to other wood. When I first started woodworking, veneer was a dirty word. But the deeper into woodworking I get, the more appreciation I have for quality veneer. Finest furniture in the world is made from hand-laid, hand-matched veneer. It's a beautiful thing. You'll see what I mean in a minute. A few things I want to try differently on this. What I've done in the past is I take the round and cut the veneers and then I trim the veneers before it goes in the bag. And I always end up needing to adjust the size of the circle and it just seems like a lot of extra work. So what I did on this one is I took the veneers and just laid them out on the square panel. And now that both sides are veneered, I can go ahead and take the circle out and it just saved about three different steps. Yeah. top of a table, I would want all of those points to gather directly in the center. Here, I'm going to be taking a good portion out and then it's going to mount table side up underneath the table. Likelihood of somebody seeing this is almost zero. Except for you. Cool. Let's get it glued down and get this show on the road. So I think I learned something really interesting here. I think I like smaller segments over larger segments. I've been kind of aiming for the straighter grain, but I really like what this cathedral does when you cut it in half. It's almost like a dove going in to the ground, like a falcon, some bird diving. Yeah, kind of cool. Okay, let's cut the circle out of here, get the circle routed out. Last time I put a border around this one, and honestly, I think that was just a huge waste of time because nobody's ever gonna see it. So I'm gonna just wrap the edge in veneer. My post just broke. Cheap ass screws. This next part is gonna be one of the most difficult and that's fitting a border all the way around. So you can imagine if you divide this circle, this disc into four pieces, the distance of that radius around that quadrant and cutting that out of a square block, you're left with something quite thick. And then what's left over is a bunch of half rounds that I've just not been able to figure out what to do with. Right now, walnut is as high as I've ever seen it. It's really expensive right now. It's also 
also really hard to come by. I've got to use what I've got very carefully <laughs> and I don't have a lot of it. Well, the radius is off and I'm not sure. A quarter if out of the 13 and a quarter is a 13 and a half inch radius. Yeah, that means, means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this setup here is all about creating a template for which to route out these segments on. I've done this with mostly success. It's just there's a few parts of the process that I haven't loved and for some reason it doesn't always come out exactly how I want it to. Finagling, word of the day, to get it into place. That pie I've taken in four segments, 360 degrees by four is gonna be 45 degrees, but now we've got eight, so each one needs to be 22 and a half degrees. So I'm gonna mark that out so I can figure out what the overall length of these chunks are gonna need to be in the rough. So that bit got into the edge just a little bit and I had some tear out and I'm just really not stoked on how that flushing is going. So I took the bit and hit where the deepest part of this little divot is and I'm just taking that out of the radius and I'm just gonna go all the way down with this bit. I think it'll be a lot cleaner in the long run. You can always count on routers to mess something up, stupid routers. Man, I got some a white boy Jufro going on today. Previously on the other one, I had made a bent lamination ring around the bottom. I think it looks cool. That ring was just sort of a pain. I don't think it turned out super clean on the first iteration. And since it's going black, I don't think it needs to be a bent lamination ring. I think I can just take a step out of here. I'll show you. Quite a few different factors that go into what walnut looks like and the colors that it produces. One thing that Cam and I both noticed when we got the version one base attached to the top is that it wasn't quite the same tone. So you'll notice the tone difference between the border here, much more brown, much more gray in the center. I think that'll cover all our bases. Hopefully this will match just a little bit better. I'm gonna set these aside for now. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the roots, laminations that we worked on earlier. I uh, get those cut down to size uh, address a few of the issues that I had in version one, which I'll explain along the way. So let's get into that. We'll get back to these in a bit. I just like to take a moment to express my deep hatred for resawing, and I can see why buying thick, raw veneers is so expensive, and I appreciate those people. Here's a hot tip. If you're gonna leave laminations or any work for that matter, I recommend using cellophane. Kind of traps the ecosystem in there after you have resawn and exposed all of that surface area to the elements, and you won't come back to a bunch of wonkiness the next day. Okay, let's feed these to the planer. All right, we got a few chippy bits here and there, but all in all, that was moderate, not bad. Yeah. Interestingly, this is actually my only version two I've ever made. I've never done the same thing twice, but I did learn quite a few things on the first one. That was a complicated, I mean, this is a complicated design, super complicated, most complicated I think I've ever done. And the first thing that I learned was it's really hard to transfer a template onto a curved surface. So I'm gonna do that right now while everything's still flat. Well, that worked great. Cool. 
Let's spread some Total Boat High Performance on it and put it in a bag. I think it's more than the hiss. Though that's satisfying. There's something about taking a bunch of wiggly noodles and turning them into a rigid structure. Bent lamb is just so cool. I'd like to try steam bending someday, and I imagine I will just as soon as I have a little bit more wiggle room and a bigger shop. All right, one week later, Putting the last lamination in, we'll get rolling on the radial match to the near bottom top at the borders, just like we did last time. Um, and hopefully by then, metal will be finished and we'll get into all of the details as soon as I have that in front of me to show you. Cool, let's get it done. One week, eight laminations. Let's get these cleaned up, cut up, and fit together. I wasn't super satisfied with the consistency of how the laminations hit the base last time, so I'm gonna do a better job on this one. And before anyone says anything, yes, this is sketchy on the table saw, and no, those are not your fingers, therefore, they're not your problem. Not your fingers, not your problem. Two and a half degrees uh, was not correct. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, 22 and a half was right. I just set my saw up wrong. Oops. Well, that would be perfect if the inside diameter was four inches. What the hell did I do wrong? Always let the computer do the math, not try to human it. Hang on. Everything's too big. This is too big, not too small. There we go, that's looking more like it. That's making my template make a lot more sense as well. Last night, woodworking while hungry, which I recommend you never do, I was trying to figure out where to cut these laminations and all of a sudden they had like doubled in size and I couldn't figure it out. So cool, that was driving me nuts. Let's get some laminations cut. Leaving cam for the version one after realizing the critical failure of my engineering and execution of the design probably should have felt worse than it did. It felt kind of great actually, but why? Well, first, cam was super cool about it. Just adds to the story, he said. Second, I've been trying to push my ability to the point of failure for the last three years and I feel like I finally succeeded. Also, I was stoked to fix the base, make a smaller sunburst top and be able to give it to one of my subscribers, one of you guys. Who else gets to make someone's day like that? And finally, this week's sponsor, Curiosity Stream, reached out to afford this very chance of redemption. And since you're watching this, I know you're going to love using their app. Curiosity Stream is on-demand video for people who want to know more. People like you and me. Netflix for nerds witty, fun, and knowledgeable stories, intelligently told without hyperbole or opinion. If you like over-engineered tables, you'll love the series Engineering the Future. Or how about Life at the Limits, Adapt or Die? Could just as well be the title of this video. Speaking of hyperbole, furniture isn't your thing? How about how to build a human? Sounds pretty doable after making this table. Show your support for my channel by showing Curiosity Stream some love. For an entire year of streaming service for only $14.99, to curiositystream.com slash Sawyer or click the link in the description below. That's code Sawyer, curiositystream.com to get started streaming today. Thanks again to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Now let's give away 
play a $10,000 table. Tanner, make sure you subscribe, I'll be checking, and simply comment below whether you'd prefer a radial match veneer top to match the base or a live edge slab. And bonus points if you share the video with a friend. Version one wasn't quite rigid enough, so I'll be remaking a new lightweight top for this as well, where I'll announce the winner in a future video. This is open to everyone, but I can only cover freight for US entries. Fine print in the description. Thanks so much, I'm looking forward to it. Now let's get back to the build. Even though I don't have the steel yet, uh, I need to make a place for this to inset, so this will tuck up underneath the table without hanging down. For that, I just need to make a 10 inch wide circle. That would take a long time with a router, so I think I'm gonna try to remove some of that material with a Forstner bit and, and taking the circumference out with the router. This little concoction is two ingredients, vinegar and steel wool, and I still get a kick out of it that it just like blows people's minds what it does to wood. If you're a subscriber, you've seen me use this, but if not, super simple. Steel wool and vinegar creates iron acetate, which reacts with the tannins in the wood. That's it, and a little bit of alchemy. You should see what I can do with water and wine. All right, that's all folks. My name's Jesus. Game just kidding, over. let's do this. So you can see in shaping that curve, we're getting a different reveal on the lamination. I really wanted the effect here to be that it sort of just blends straight into the surface. So I'm gonna try and just kind of feather that out to a point. inch wall DOM, super beefy, three eighths inch plates, top and bottom, inside one, sleeves to the outer one. There are set screws to tension upper and lower to keep this thing from wanting to rotate at all. And it's heavy and I'm stoked because I think this is going to be the fix. All right, let's get it installed. The first go around, this was one of the most difficult parts. The order of operations for getting glue onto the surface, but having all the slats nest together perfectly around the center post while also lining up with the hole, super tricky. But these reference pegs are just game changer. I don't know why I didn't do that before. It is perfect.
Now, I don't know that I call anything I make art. By any textbook definition, art and craft are delineated very clearly by functionality. Art evokes emotion where craft serves a purpose. I don't think it would surprise any of you that I like to live in the gray zone between those two. So this build has me curious. When craft tries to art, is there a trade-off in ultimate utility? I think maybe in some cases the answer is yes. The pedestal table in general probably isn't the most stable table to begin with. How stable is stable enough? I'm not sure what my expectations are and seeing if this thing works to the ultimate utility. But damn, it's gonna look good. All right, delivering the table, headed over to Cam's house. It was sunny and 70 at my house. I did not cover the table. Stupid bet to make in Portland, Oregon. And viewers are curious. Should be eight to 11 is like perfect. High would be 15. Probably won't be much lower than eight. Whoa, 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 back it up. Let's get this table underneath the base first. All right, Cam, we've proven that my uh, prediction is not always in line with reality. So I want you to give it a prediction this time. What do you think? Will it hold? We gotta shim it, and that's the floor, that's not the table. It seems pretty good. All right, let's find out. Last time, 90%, I think that jinxed us. Uh, this one, I'm gonna go with 50%. All right. Nice and safe. Definitely more stable. It's a lot more stable. Somebody moving something. Yeah, so we don't have a moment where there's three seconds, you know, picking up the silverware, putting, you know, between four people, five people. Yeah. You do that. Yeah, that's... Okay, that is not every three seconds. No, if no. We're, if we're eating, yeah, you know, cutting a little bit. Like, even if that was totally full, I don't know that we've spilled yet. No, I don't think, you, I, I genuinely don't think it's gonna tip over and spill even if you give it a good wobble. Um, I think it's just the, I feel like people would want a stable table. I think if they wanted a, the most stable table, they would not buy a pedestal table. I don't know that I would have this as my dining table. I think it's too small for a dining table. Breakfast or like a grand entry. I could see it as a foyer table. Foyer. Classy. Totally. Classy word. Yep. Yep. I, I, I say foyer. Foyer. Where, where are you from? I'm not French. Are you from Idaho or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of times in which it would make the table not functional. What's functional? Yeah. Um, I mean, before that resonance, I think mm -hmm. non-functional. It, it continued. This mm -hmm. self-corrects pretty quickly. It's a statement piece for sure. Mm -hmm. I think this video gives this the amount of explanation that is needed and people can decide like, yeah, when you put out a product, it has to meet your at least threshold yeah. for it. So if you would have this as your breakfast table then it meets that threshold, now it's up to the other people to decide what their threshold is. And now it's just a matter of us deciding, you know, is this good enough to go out, and, you know, with, with our names on it. And I'm not saying it's not, I just, am, I don't know. Six people's glasses, most of the meal. I mean, if you're having somebody over with Parkinson's, this may be a concern, but I mean, typically we're all fairly well-mannered. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> you, you, you don't know my friends. <laughs> I don't see any reason for failure. It's not gonna tip. It's definitely it's, not gonna tip. It, no, it's definitely strong, it's not gonna break. So, if you're, if you're curious, I am. viewers are curious, should be, Eight to 11 is like perfect. High would be 15. Probably won't be much lower than eight. 12, 11, 11, 12, 13. Ooh. Shit. Hmm, project got interesting. Got, it's been interesting. <laughs> All right, so what does this mean? Well, 32% is really wet wood. Something that wet is not only unsellable, but sort of unsalvageable at this point as well. 
And before we get to the money shots, overall just super pleased with the execution on this base all the way around. Came went ahead and finished up the top. I discovered that mounting this steel plate directly to the underside of the table might improve stability. Marginally, I think it did improve. We'll let you guys hash that out in the comments. And while Cam fixes up a new top for this, I've got a few tricks I wanna try to stiffen this thing up because damn, that looks good. say how much I appreciate that Cam is willing to stick this out with me. He's definitely someone I admire a lot for business, YouTube, woodworking, all of the above. And it's been a really cool opportunity to work with him. And hey, we get to keep going. Be sure and go check out his half of this build. I will link that right here. And if you enjoyed this video, you will likely enjoy one of these two as well. To be continued. Again. Peace.